Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. On today's tutorial, I will be demonstrating how to make a two ball skirt for a wedding dress. Hi, my name is Ayo and I'm reaching you from Lagos, Nigeria. On this channel, I upload DIYs, pattern drafting and sewing tutorials. If you haven't subscribed yet, kindly do so and do not forget to turn on the notification bell so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. So now, let's get right into the tutorial. Thank you. So the first thing I intend to do is to draft the basic skirt pattern for this wedding dress. I will be working with the following measurements. Waist circumference 31 inches. Hip circumference 38 inches. Dress length 62 inches. Length of the upper body is 15 inches. So I have here my pattern paper. And I've already drawn the margin of 2 inches at the top and on the left hand side of the pattern paper. So what I intend to do now is to draw a rectangle. The width of the rectangle is the hip circumference divided by 2 plus 1.5 inches for the hips, which is equal to 30 divided by 2 plus 1.5 and this is equal to 20.5 inches. So on this upper line, I will measure 20.5 inches and I will mark the points like this. So to estimate the length of the skirt, the full length of the dress is 16 inches. The length of the upper body is 15 inches. So the skirt length is 62 inches minus 15 inches which is equal to 47 inches. So I'll go ahead and measure 47 inches starting from the top line downwards. I will now mark the 47 inches point. I will now go ahead and draw a rectangle using the stated dimensions. So I will now go ahead and divide the rectangle into two equal halves. So now I've done that. This is the center line. This side will be the center back, while this side will be the center front. So this line is the starting line. And from the starting line, I will measure the waist to hip measurement downwards. The standard waist to hip measurement is usually around 8 to 9 inches. But this time around, we are making a skirt for a wedding dress. So we need to take note of where the upper bodies of the dress stops. And from this point, we now measure downwards to the hips. In this case, it is 13 inches. That is, from the point where the upper bodies of the dress stops down to the hips of the client, what I got after measurement was 13 inches. So I will now measure 13 inches from the starting line downwards. I will now connect the points together using a straight line. 
Now I will estimate the waist circumference, which is the waist circumference plus one inch for ease divided by four, plus another one inch for the waist that, which is equal to 31 plus one all over four plus one, which is equal to nine inches. So on the starting line, which is my waistline, I will now measure and mark 9 inches starting from the center front and the center back respectively. For the back, I first of all measure half an inch inwards like this and I will mark the half an inch point. From the half an inch point, I will, starting from the half an inch point, I will now measure and mark the 9 inches that was estimated earlier. The half an inch that was used for the center back tightening on the upper bodice of the dress should be transferred to the skirt pattern also. The center back tightening will prevent zipper bulge. I will now calculate the hip circumference plus 1 inch for ease divided by 4 and this is 38 plus 1 all over 4 which gave me 9.75 inches. I will now measure and mark 9.75 starting from the center back and the center front respectively. I will now go ahead and mark the points. I will now connect the waist to the hips like this. I will now measure what I have here. I will measure it like this using my tape rule. I will now transfer what I have to the M, the measurement I have to the M of the skirt. I will now go ahead and connect the hips to the end of the skirt using my long ruler. So it's now time to draw the dart for the skirt. To know the position of the dart from the center back and the center front, I will simply divide the nipple to nipple measurement, also known as the also known as the bust pan measurement, into two. In this case, it's seven divided by two, which gave me three point five. So I measure three point five inches, starting from the center back and the center front, respectively. The dart is one inch wide and it should end two inches above the hip line. So I will mark half inch on both sides like this. Then as for the length, the length should be two inches above the hip line. It should end two inches above the dart should end two inches above the hip line. So now I will now go ahead and draw the dots. As for this half an inch used for the center back tightening, it should stop at the same point as the dots, that is two inches above the hip line. 
So I will now connect the two points together like this. The line, the line will be a slanted one. So now I've cut out the back and the front patterns. So what I intend to do now is to go ahead and close the waist dart because we don't need it for this dress. We don't need them for this dress. So this is the back pattern and I've already fixed extra paper at the center back. I will now go ahead and add one inch zipper allowance at the center back of the skirt. I will cut out the extra paper or the excess paper like this. So as you can see, I've already drawn the slash lines on the back and on the front skate patterns. I divided them into three sections. So now I go ahead and slash the slash lines for both the back and the front patterns. So I have already spread the front pattern piece on the bridal satin and I have also, also added the needed seam allowance. So for this lower part, I spread it by about 11 to 12 inches. The bridal satin is on fold as you can see. So now I've already cut out the front piece. I used one and a half inches side seam allowance and half an inch seam allowance at the waistline. And I used one inch seam allowance at the end of the skirt. I've also cut out the back, the back skirt piece. I spread out the aim by 11 to 12 inches also. So I will now remove the pattern pieces. So I've also already cut out the lining fabric using exactly the same dimension as the bridal satin. This is the front skirt piece. I've also cut out the lining using the exact same dimension as the bridal satin pieces. The front pieces were caught on fold as you can see. So these are all the pieces that I cut out for the skirt. I cut out the skirt pattern both on the bridal satin and also on the lining. 
had to join to the length of the lining because the fabric was not long enough. So this is the lining and the bridal satin piece for the front of the skirt. And this is the lining and the bridal satin pieces for the back. So these are the bridal satin pieces for the back. I will now go ahead and fix my zip to the center back, the skirts of the bridal satin. So now I've done that, I've already fixed the zip. As you can see. I've also joined the two back lining pieces together at the center back, but I, I left the zip area open. I will now place the front bridal satin on top of the back bridal satin. Like this, right sides will be together. I will now join the two pieces together at the side seams using one and a half inches seam allowance, which was the seam allowance that I used when I was cutting out the fabric. So now I've done that, I've joined the side seams together for both the lining and the bridal satin. This is the bridal satin. I have gone ahead to mark out the positions where I will be placing the two nets on the bridal satin. You should use an air erasable pen to do this so as to avoid staining the white fabric. When the two nets on the bridal satin, the bridal satin will start from the middle line, from the middle point of the of the bridal satin. So if we start from this middle middle line, which I've already drawn on the bridal satin, I will now space each line two inches apart up to up to this point. I will now reduce it to one inch. I now reduce it to one one inch up to this point and I now left half an inch seam allowance at this upper part which will be used to connect the skirt to the bodies of the dress. From this line, which is drawn at the middle of the skirt, I will measure the length downwards. I 
I will measure the length downwards at the side like this. I will make it 2 inches longer than the bridal satin because there may be the need to trim the two bust kit after sewing. So for the first layer of two nets, the length required is 27 inches. I will now go ahead and cut 4 pieces of 2 nets that are 27 inches long. Note that the 2 net is on fold. So I have here 4 pieces of 2 nets which I'm going to join together into a single piece and I will gather, gather it. So now I have gone ahead to cut out the 2 nets for the other lengths that will be needed to make the ball, the ball skirt. I have already numbered them chronologically so as to avoid confusion i wrote the numbers on the tiny pieces of paper which i attached on the two nets as you can see so for this boss case we have 10 layers of two nets these are the different lengths of two nets that I will cut out. 27 inches, 30 inches, 33 inches, 36 inches, 39 inches, 42 inches, 45 inches, 48 inches, 51 inches, and 52 inches. So as you can see, I increased the spacing in between the layers into 3 inches as opposed to the 2 inches which I meant to use initially. Then the final two layers will be one inch apart. So for each length of tool, I cut four pieces of two nets, which I seek together before gathering. I did this for all the ten layers of two nets that will be layered on the bridal satin. So this is the first layer of the two nets. I have already joined the four pieces of two nets together and I gathered it. As you can see, I've already gathered it. Go ahead and fix it to the bridal satin. I fix it to the bridal satin with my pins. So now I have already pinned the two nets all around the bridal satin as you can see. This is the upper part of the skirt. This is the upper part. This is the zip. And the first two layer, we start from the middle point of the skirt. The middle point of the bridal satin skirt. So this is how the two nets we lay on the bridal satin after stitching it in place.
I folded in the raw edge of the two nets so that I can have a clean finish. So now I will go ahead and stitch the two nets to the bridal satin on my sewing machine. So now I've already done that. I will now go ahead to paint the second layer of two nets all around the bridal satin. It will be three inches above the first layer. So now, I have gone ahead to paint the second layer of two nets all around the bridal satin. It is three inches above the first layer of two nets. I folded in the raw edges of the two nets so that I can have a clean finish. I will now go ahead and do the stitching. So now that has been done, as you can see, I will now go ahead and do the same thing for the remaining 8 layers of 2 nets. The space in between them will be 3 inches apart except for the last 2 layers that will be 1 inch apart. So after sewing all the 10 layers of 2 nets, this is what I have. To achieve that big ball effect, you need to wear a ball dress petticoat underneath it. So that's it guys, we are done. If you, have, if you find this video helpful, do not forget to like, share, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you in my next tutorial. Bye and thank you for watching.